With all the new safety and health protocols in place at Disney World, we are faced with learning all new tips and tricks for visiting the parks. But don't worry, we've got you covered. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Mandatory masks, limited capacity at restaurants, and new policies and health concerns are gonna affect your next Disney trip, but it doesn't need to be a huge deal. We've experienced theme parks with masks and reduced capacity, and we've got some advice to share with you today. Here's totally different tips you need for visiting Disney World now. And if you want a handy guide to these new tips, you can get a free printable list by going to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash new tips and signing up for our newsletter, which is also free. You'll get the latest news right into your inbox and be ready to go with these new tips once the parks reopen. Again, just head to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash new tips. First up, you're gonna bring those extra masks. While we have spotted some in case of emergency masks on hand at the entrance to Disney Springs, we can say it's a safe bet to not expect a freebie mask if something goes wrong when you're in the parks and you find yourself suddenly without one. Disney's requiring all guests ages two and up to wear masks or face coverings that cover your nose and mouth in all public areas, and you won't be allowed in the parks if you don't have one. There are several reasons you want to bring more than one mask, though. First, if you get caught in a sudden rainstorm or get soaked on a water ride, you're definitely going to want to have a backup mask in your bag. And while we didn't have any issues with feeling like our mask might fall off on rides over at Universal, it's a possibility, so having an extra is always a safe bet. It's also summer in Florida right now, which means it's hot. You may want to bring an extra to swap out after a sweaty day in the parks if you plan on staying into the evening. Disney will likely be selling masks in the park, but they may not be available in every shop. If you need to buy an extra once you arrive, we recommend doing that before you need it. You don't want to be stuck in the exit queue of a ride and realize you need to walk halfway across the park to get a new mask. Next tip, make reservations for everything. The days of getting a walk-up reservation or always being able to snag a seat in the lounge may be over, at least for now. We recommend making reservations for any table service restaurant you want to dine at and doing so as far in advance as possible. Disney has released the information that you have to, have to, have to have a dining reservation if you want to eat at a table service restaurant in a theme park once they reopen. So that's July 11th for Magic Kingdom and Animal Kingdom and July 15th for Epcot and Hollywood Studios. So I'll say that again, in order to eat at a table service restaurant in the parks, you have to have a reservation. You cannot get a walk up. So make those reservations as far in advance as possible. Now remember, Disney's just changed their reservation time frame from 180 days in advance to just 60 days in advance. So that includes restaurants as well as other experiences. But remember right now, Disney's got a pause on all new reservations. That includes hotels, dining, and experiences. Though some Disney Springs restaurants are still available for booking within the My Disney Experience app right now. So with restaurants having significantly reduced capacity, even places that are typically easy to get a last minute reservation, might become harder to snag. So don't take the risk. Get that table service reservation for short in the park. All right, next tip, get a QR reader app and always have a charged phone. Most restaurants will have disposable paper menus, but you can save a tree and help reduce waste by using the QR and mobile order menus offered at most locations. Make sure you have an app downloaded ahead of time so you can pull up those QR menus in the parks. Make sure your phone is charged too. Making plans on your phone has long been a crucial step in planning a Disney vacation, but now it's an absolute necessity, it seems. Our experience at Universal has been that if you don't have a smartphone, you're kind of out of luck with a lot of rides operating with virtual queues and many quick service restaurants requiring you to mobile order your food. Now, of course, Disney will have systems in place for those who do not have smartphones, but it's gonna be a lot easier if you've got one. Now, since virtual queues are new, there are no established kiosks for guests without access to a smartphone and just like FastPass, we found that new times for popular rides would pop up throughout the day. So if you don't have a smartphone, make sure you get to guest services ASAP and figure out what the system is for you. And of course, we'll be reporting on it on DisneyFoodBlog.com as soon as we find out. But for those of you with smartphones, keep those puppies charged. Be sure to bring a portable charger or two in your park bag. We have seen the fuel rod kiosks operational, though at times they have limited stock as the machines aren't being serviced as frequently. Um, so it may be a good idea to bring back up if you typically use fuel rods. 
All right, next tip, bring your own reusable silverware. This is always a good tip for food festivals, and we've always recommended bringing your own reusable straw if you're not a fan of the paper ones now being used in the parks. Disney switched to a lower touch risk setup for silverware displays, but you still might wanna bring your own to reduce the number of things you touch and to help reduce your trash. You can buy travel silverware sets online, but yep, reusable silverware, always a good choice. And also, just FYI, if you do have reusable silverware, remember to buy a little tiny bottle of dish soap so you can wash it each night. All right, next tip, bring a bag for your mask. You've sat down to eat, you're allowed to take your mask off, but where do you put it? Yeah, this is something you're not gonna think about until you're in the moment. Do you put it on the table? Do you jam it in your pocket? Some restaurants have begun to offer little disposable bags or something similar to store your mask while you eat, but we expect that most restaurants won't have that extra amenity, so you should plan ahead. You don't really wanna just shove it in a pocket because of potential contamination. Really, you wanna reduce the amount of times you're touching your mask as much as possible. That means taking it off once you sit down to eat and not touching it again until you're ready to get up, instead of, say, taking it off and on between bites. Experts suggest storing your mask in a clean plastic or paper bag while you eat, so be sure to bring one with you, just in case the location you eat at doesn't offer one. Next tip, bring Clorox wipes and hand sanitizer. Even though we see cast members wiping down every surface, you might wanna wipe it down yourself, especially if you're eating with your kiddos or somebody who has a compromised immune system. If you got a kid that loves to touch everything in their immediate vicinity, giving it all an extra wipe down can give you some added security and remember to wipe down your phone frequently. Smartphones are probably the highest touch point in all of Disney World. Also bring a small travel size container of disinfectant wipes in your park bag. Be sure to pack some hand sanitizer too. Disney's installing hand sanitizer and hand wash stations near high touch points, but sometimes you might need it when there isn't one around. Just like masks, sanitizer may likely be something that sells out quickly in the parks. Next tip, chewing gum. Gum has never been sold in Disney World, so it's always been one of those things to pack if you need it. But even if you're not a gum chewer, you might wanna consider bringing some on this trip. It's been a lifesaver for us while wearing masks in Disney Springs after eating. You might also consider a pack of mints or even a chewable mouthwash tab. Trust us, you'll be glad to have it. Next tip is to have a designated photographer. This is based off our visits to Universal and we've actually got confirmation that Disney is doing this as well. Cast members won't be allowed to take your phone to take a photo. Even though character meet and greets aren't happening when the parks first reopen, there are still tons of spots for photos around Disney World and there will likely still be cast members there ready to take your photo. But unless you have Memory Maker, a package that includes free downloads of any photos taken by PhotoPass photographers in the parks, you'll want to have a designated photographer in your group to capture photos with your camera or phone. Typically, photographers would happily take your camera to snap a few free pictures, but now they're not allowed to handle your phone, so plan ahead. And that next tip, learn how to wear 3D glasses. Yeah, this one seems pretty simple. You just put them on like regular glasses. But if you haven't had the joy of wearing glasses and a mask yet, well, let's just say it's gonna take some finesse to get it right. This goes for sunglasses too, y'all, and any kind of glasses may fog up when you're wearing them in combination with a mask. For 3D shows and attractions, put the glasses on top of your mask so they don't get fogged up. It might take a little maneuvering to get it right, but we'd recommend you try this at home with a pair of sunglasses. Look into the masks that have a tighter seal at the top, which helps to direct air downwards and away from your eyes. Overall, you're gonna wanna make sure that mask is comfortable, so practice wearing it for a few hours at a time and go for several long walks around your neighborhood to make sure you're comfortable walking around in it. Masks are just like shoes. There are ones that are more suited to a long day in the park than others, and we suggest you figure that out before your trip. We actually have a blog post on Disney Food Blog of the most comfortable masks, so that might be a good one to check out. Okay, so there's all our totally different tips you need for visiting Disney World here when the parks reopen in just a few weeks. Thank you guys for listening. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We, of course, will do all kinds of videos when we are back in the parks, um, giving you information, details, updates about what it's like. So if you're not subscribed, now's a great time to subscribe so you make sure you get to see exactly what it's like when we get back there into the parks. And don't forget, go to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash new tips if you want all this info in a PDF that you can just print out and you didn't take notes. We've got it all for you. Just got to sign up for our free newsletter. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.